In this video, we're going to discuss real gases and how their behavior differs from that of ideal gases. So first of all, as you recall, ideal gases are models of real gases. And under conditions of high temperature and low pressure, ideal gases are good models of real gases. However, if you're under conditions of low temperatures and or high pressures on the MCAT, you need to know that you can no longer treat your real gas as an ideal gas. You must look at how real gases behave. So to look at the differences between ideal gases and real gases, we need to take a look at the volume and pressure of each. So when we are looking at ideal gases, the volume is simply the volume of the container. However, for real gases, you need to remember that one of the key assumptions of ideal gases is that ideal gas particles have negligible volume compared to the volume of the container. So we essentially said that ideal gas particles don't occupy any volume, but that's not true. Real gas particles do occupy volume. So what that means is, for an ideal gas particle, you would say there's gas particles in here, but since they don't occupy any volume, the volume available to the gas particles is the entire volume of the container. But if you look at a real gas, real gas particles do occupy volume. So if you want to look at the volume available to the real gases, it's not the entire container you have to take the volume of the container and subtract the volume occupied by the gas molecules themselves. And we can come up with an equation to correct for this. So here on the top, we have the ideal gas law. So you recall, we've got our PV equals NRT. Here, we're going to look at the Van der Waals equation for real gases, which essentially makes corrections to the ideal gas laws for real gases. So in terms of the volume, as we just said, ideal gases have the entire volume available to them, the entire volume of the container. For real gases, you have the volume of the container, but you have to subtract the volume occupied by the gas molecules. That's equal to the product of N and B. So N is the number of moles of gas, and this makes sense because the more moles of gas you have, the more volume is being occupied by your gas molecules. B, you can think of as a constant that describes how big your molecules are. So to be more precise, this is looking at the volume of the gas particles. And this is just because not all gas particles are the same size. Some gas particles are smaller. Some gas particles are larger. So that's what B takes into account. So when you subtract the product of these two, you're able to subtract the volume occupied by the gas particles, and that corrects for the volume. All right, let's take a look at the pressure, ideal pressure versus real pressure. For ideal gases, the gas particles are moving freely about, so they're moving in whatever directions that they want. And as they move randomly about, they're going to collide with the walls of the container to produce a pressure. How are real gases different? Well, again, remember, our assumptions of ideal gases from the kinetic molecular theory of gases. One of the assumptions is that ideal gases do not experience intermolecular forces. That's not true though for real gases. So real gas particles do experience intermolecular forces, IMFs. And intermolecular forces, they're all attractive. So the fact that they're attractive means that the gas particle is just don't just move around independent of each other. The gas particles can interact with each other. So the consequence of that is, as the gas molecules are attracted to each other, they don't collide as frequently with the walls of the container, and they actually have a tendency to clump up in the middle. 
So that means that real gases have a lower pressure than ideal gases. So let's take a look at how we can make this correction. So here's our correction for volume. Now we want to correct for pressure. Now if we take a look at our equation for the ideal gas law, if we rearrange it, we can get pressure is equal to NRT divided by the volume. So let's start with that. We can say that pressure is equal to NRT divided by the volume. Here we can plug in the corrected volume since we already corrected for that. So it's V minus NB. However, since we said that real gases have a lower pressure than ideal gases, we have to subtract a term from this expression. The term that we have to subtract is A N over V squared. So to explain what these terms are, we can see that we have another constant here. So A is a constant that I can think of as the strength of the attractive forces. So if you were to look at London dispersion forces versus hydrogen bonds, generally molecules that can form hydrogen bonds will have a greater A value than molecules that only have London dispersion forces. So you can think of A as being related to the strength of the IMFs. We have N, which is moles of gas, V, which is the volume. We've seen this before, but combined N over V is moles per volume, which is the concentration of the gas particles. And this is important because how much the pressure is decreased by depends on how many interactions you have. And the greater the concentration of gas particles, the more interactions you will have. So therefore, the more you will decrease the pressure. So that's why we have to subtract by the concentration. And you also have to subtract by the concentration squared, because here I drew it like the molecules are only interacting with this molecule in the center. But that's not true. All the molecules can interact with each other. So actually, as you increase the concentration, the number of attractive intermolecular forces scales exponentially. So this is our correction for the pressure. Now, with this equation, we can rearrange it. We can add this an squared over v squared term over to the left. That's going to give us p plus an squared over v squared. We can then multiply by v minus nb. And this will be equal to nrt. This equation that we've written here is the van der Waals equation for real gases. And this is the corrective version of the ideal gas law for working with real gases. Now, with MCAT, it's not super likely that they're going to give you a question where you have to do a calculation with this equation. So more important is the conceptual idea of where this equation comes from. So make sure from this video you're able to understand why we corrected for the volume as well as why we corrected for the pressure for real gases in comparison to ideal gases.